Ikea looking for a little inspiration for something to resize in miniature. I love Ikea and I love it even more in miniature. I just found a hat and coat stand. We could easily make this out of some wooden dowels. Really, really simple craft. Are you okay? Yeah. All jokes aside, I am really liking this couch. We might have to remove all of that. But yeah, I like the pattern. It might be kind of difficult to find something just like this though. I like this. It has a very simple design. There's a short back. This is probably like, I don't know, two feet off the ground and a pretty thick base with a thin pillow on top, a couple of throw pillows, and an ottoman. It sits pretty low to the ground, it's kind of weird. Basically on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> what color would you say that is? Mauve? No, <laughs> mauve is like a pink kind of grayish color. This is like a, a bluish gray. Blue gray. Blue gray. Blue gray. Add some yellow pillows. This one is definitely a contender for today's project. This couch is actually two different pieces, so we can make it even smaller. That's double miniature, y'all. I was a little worried about the size of this couch, but the fact that we can break it up and maybe only make a love seat, that, uh, that makes it a little bit more appealing. Ooh, yellow. Like the yellow and white with the little touches of black. This is really nice and the gray backsplash, all the little tiling there. That's pretty cool. What are, you, what are you doing? Don't break anything. Ooh, this is pretty. But this is a very large room. Kind of looking for a slightly smaller project today. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bella's Baking Show. I'm your host, Bella. All right, today we are going to take this pot and this whisk and make something fabulous. Watch and see. Whoa, look at that. Light as air. <laughs> You're gonna love it. <laughs> what? No Wi Fi? I say no. <laughs> it just won't stop. All right, but that is a pretty cool chair. <laughs> All right, you're under the spotlight here. Let's look at these angles. It's a lot of covered angles, thin legs. Goes all the way around the back. Oh, there's some pockets in the back for like your magazines. That's pretty cool. Okay, I am liking all of this color. We have red, blue, yellow, and the pillow. Can we see the pillow? Black and white pillow. This looks like a pretty simple construction. Thin arms. The seat just kind of goes up and over with a short back. There's a pillow in the back that matches the rest of the chair, then the black and white pillow. And the edges have uh, a trim that we would have to sew and put on the top. Doable. Whoa, do you see this chair right here? It is a pretty like rose pink, has a wooden base, wooden Dallas popsicle sticks, cardboard and fabric. Let's get a really good look here. Yes, yeah, so we would have to build a wooden base, then make the seat, and then there's a thin cushion that is on top. Hmm. Here's a very, very simple wooden table. We got two circles on the top with wooden legs. That would be a very, very easy project to do. Little tiny box on the top and a chair on the side. Now, I'm not totally loving this chair. That looks like a lot of work, but the table is definitely on the idea board. We're back in the studio, so let's get started with our first IKEA-inspired miniature. I'm gonna try to make this chair using recycled cardboard. I salvaged this from a shipping box, so we're doing a little recycling here. I bought this at Ikea. It's a pillow cover, and it's very close to the color of the chair that we're trying to make. We need a few wooden dowels and popsicle sticks. We might need felt, too, and paper. Before we start cutting the cardboard, I want to sketch out a pattern, make a plan. Let's start by drawing the seat, but it can't be wider than the popsicle stick. So that looks about, about right. 
I'm making my seat two and a half inches deep. Let's add the arms. I'm gonna say about an inch and a half. I go three inches up for the back of the chair. Now we don't want the arms to go straight up. We're gonna want them at an angle. So we need to put an angle on the back of the chair. Round off the edges on the front arms. I have a feeling I need this to go down just a little. So let's cut this out, use tape to put it together and see if our design kind of works. Fold on the lines. The arms are gonna curve a little to fit the side. Use a little tape and we have an idea of how our chair is going to look. We can make some adjustments. I'm gonna round off these corners a little, cut the tape, fold it in half, take another piece of paper, fold it in half, place the folded edge of the cutout on the folded edge of the paper, trace around it, cut on the line drawn to make our pattern. Place it on cardboard, trace around it, carefully cut it out to make the base for the chair. Let's draw a few lines so we know where it needs to bend. I'm using the edge of my ruler to make the bends nice and clean, form the chair, and I'm not really loving that armrest. I think I took too much off at this end. It needs to go farther out, then come down. Ah, gotta do that over. New pattern, new cardboard. I like this a lot better and I shorten the back a little. Take the pattern and the pillow cover, turn the pillow cover inside out, place it onto the fabric, trace around it, remove the pattern, add a seam allowance going all the way around, remove the pattern, pin the two layers of the pillow cover together, cut it out. Now we have the fabric for our chair. To give it a little cushion, I'm using felt. I'm gonna glue this right onto the cardboard using hot glue. Gotta work fast to keep the glue smooth and I put it in the corners so that the felt sticks to them. Trim off the excess, repeat on the other side so it is covered with felt. Take the pink fabric. I'm gonna sew a straight line starting about here and then I will end about there. My pink thread is not an exact match, but I think it'll work. The drawn line will help me to keep my stitches straight. When I start sewing, I go forward a little, then I reverse and go back, and then forward to lock my stitch. Continue going around the line, stop at the marked spot, then go forward and backwards a few times to lock the stitch. Remove the pins, make small cuts in the corners. When the fabric goes in, when the angle is out, we're gonna cut those corners off. And everywhere it bends, we make little tiny cuts, making sure that you do not cut your thread. Flip it right side out, bend the cardboard to fit inside. This takes a little bit of work Use the end of a paintbrush to help smooth it out and push the cardboard into all of the corners. It would have helped if this fabric had a little bit of stretch, but we totally got it to work. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue in my corners to try to reduce the fabric from bunching up too much. Use a needle and thread to stitch the opening closed. I kept my stitches close together hoping that it would make it a little neater. Line the armrest up with the back of the chair. Use a needle and thread to sew them together. Bend the arms so they make a curve, giving us a pretty good shape for our chair. Cut a wooden dowel into three inch pieces. Sand the ends round. Glue them onto the sides for some pretty wobbly legs. I want to use a popsicle stick to create some support. However, it's not quite long enough. So I'm using a super jumbo craft stick. Cut it right down the middle to make a longer popsicle stick. 
Measure the length needed under the chair. Cut the ends at an angle. Cut the other half of the craft stick into two smaller pieces. Glue them onto the ends. Then glue it underneath. Glue the legs onto the sides to give our chair some much needed support. Fold over the arms from the pattern and the back of the chair. I'm gonna make everything fit inside the seat. Place it on leftover material from the pillow cover. Trace around it. Add a seam allowance. Use pins to hold the two layers of fabric together. Cut it out. Place it on felt. Cut around it. Sew a straight stitch going all the way around, leaving an opening. Trim off the corners. Flip it between the two layers of pink fabric. Sew the opening closed to make a cushion for the chair. Completing our resized IKEA chair. That totally works as a phone stand. Check out our Instagram at MyFroggyStuff for other ideas on how to use miniatures. Thank you for joining us while we resized it. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff and the Frog Vlog. And you're done. Happy crafting! I'm not gonna be silent in this bare of way.